Frost is a vector force acting normally on a surface and is denoted by F. For example, consider the simple act of driving a nail into a wall with a hammer. The force that you exert on the hammer during this activity is thrust. Thrust is measured in dyne in the CGS system and Newton denoted by N in the SI system. We have seen that nails have pointed tips to help us drive them into surfaces. Why is it important for a nail to have a pointed tip? For that matter, why is it important to have a sharp knife to chop vegetables? The force you apply in driving a nail or chopping vegetables is translated into pressure. Depending upon the surface area of the object, on which the force is applied. In other words, pressure is the amount of thrust acting on a unit area. Pressure is denoted by the letter P. Hence, pressure is calculated by dividing thrust with area. The lesser the surface area of an object, the more the pressure applied by that object. The pointer tip of the nail minimizes the surface area of the nail on which thrust is applied. Therefore, while driving the nail into the wall, the pressure of the hammer is maximized, which helps drive the nail into the wall. Pressure is scalar and is measured in time per centimeter square in the CGS system. Or Newton per meter square or Pascal, denoted by PA in the SI system. Another example will help illustrate further the distinction between thrust and pressure exerted by a body. Take a piece of foam and two identical metal blocks, CA and B, weighing 300 grams. The length, breadth and thickness of these blocks are 30, 20 and 10 centimeters respectively. Place the metal block A <coughs> vertically on the foam and the other iron block B horizontally. Now let's compare the compression of the foam where blocks A and B are placed. The foam shows more compression where the metal block E is positioned vertically. Considering that both the blocks have the same length, breadth, height and weight, why do you think we see this difference in the compression of foam? This difference can be attributed to the difference in pressure exerted by each block. Block A was placed vertically over the sheet of foam while block B was placed horizontally. The surface area of block A in touch with the foam is 200 square centimeters. On the other hand, the surface area of block B in touch with the foam is 600 square centimeters. Using the formula for pressure, we can now calculate the pressure of blocks A and B on the foam. The pressure of block A on the foam is 1,500 dyne per centimeter square. The pressure of block B on the foam is 500 dyne per centimeter square. Thus, in block A, the same thrust was acting on a smaller surface area. Hence, the pressure exerted by block A was higher. This explains why the foam showed more compression where block A was placed. We looked at the examples of thrust and pressure in solids. However, 
thrust and pressure are equally applicable to the other states of matter. Liquids and gases Liquids and gases are collectively referred to as fluids. Since all fluids have the tendency to flow, like solids, fluids also have weight and this weight exerts a force on the walls and base of a container. We can demonstrate the effect of pressure in liquids through a simple example using a plastic bottle. Fill the plastic bottle completely with water. Then make a small hole in the lower half of the wall of the bottle. You will see that the water gushes out through the hole with considerable force. This force is due to the pressure of the fluid at that point. So, how do we calculate pressure in fluids? To derive an expression for pressure in fluids, let's consider a beaker filled with a fluid, say water of density D, to a height H. Drop a coin with the area of cross-section A into the beaker. The volume of the water column above the coin V is equal to area of cross-section of the coin multiplied by the height of the water column. This gives us equation 1. Volume V is equal to A multiplied by H. The mass of the water in column M is the product of the volume of the water and its density. Thus, M is equal to V multiplied by D. Substituting equation 1 in the expression for mass, you get equation 2. That is, M is equal to product of A, H and D. As you know, weight of a substance is a product of its mass and the acceleration due to gravity, g. Therefore, weight of the water column, w, is equal to the mass of the water column multiplied by g. Thus, w is equal to m multiplied by g. Substituting equation 2 here, you get equation 3. Weight of the water column acts normally on the object. Thus the pressure P acting on the coin is the ratio of weight of the water column to the area of the coin. That is, P is equal to W divided by A. From equation 3, we know W is equal to product of A, H, D and G. This gives the expression of fluid pressure, P. P is equal to HDG, where H is equal to height of the water column, D is equal to density of the water, and G is equal to acceleration due to gravity. Using this expression, you can calculate the pressure applied by a fluid in the walls as well as the base of a container. The pressure at a point in a fluid is equal in magnitude in all the directions. Now let's look at some applications of the concept of Pascal's law and hydraulic brake system. Pascal's law. Pascal's law was formulated by Blaise Pascal to describe the effects of pressure within a liquid. The law states that the pressure exerted anywhere in a mass of confined liquid is transmitted undiminished in all directions throughout the liquid. The working of hydraulic devices like the hydraulic press and the hydraulic brakes are based on this principle. Hydraulic brake system. We all know that a car slows down and stops when we apply brakes. But how does this happen? 
How does the force exerted on the foot pedal stop or slow down a car? How does it multiply the force so that it is enough to stop something as big as a car? The basic idea behind any hydraulic system is very simple. The force applied at one point is transmitted to another point using an incompressible fluid, generally oil. Most brake systems also multiply the force in the process. Here you can see the simplest possible hydraulic system. Two pistons are fitted into two glass cylinders filled with oil and connected to one another with an oil-filled pipe. If you apply a downward force on one of the pistons, then the force is transmitted to the second piston through the oil in the pipe. Since oil is incompressible, the efficiency is very good. Thus, most of the applied force appears at the second piston. The advantage of hydraulic systems is that the pipe connecting the two cylinders can be of any length and shape allowing it to choose any part separating the two pistons. The other advantage about a hydraulic system is that it multiplies the force applied. Here you can see the hydraulic brake system of an automobile. When the brakes are applied, the foot pedal is pushed due to which pressure is exerted on the fluid in the master cylinder. This pressure is transmitted equally and undiminished throughout the fluid and to the pistons of the wheel cylinder. Therefore, the pistons get pushed outwards and the brake shoes get pressed against the rim of the wheel due to which the motion retards. On releasing the pressure on the pedal, the return spring forces the pistons of the wheel cylinder back and the fluid flows back into the master cylinder. Hope you will remember this the next time you see a driver applying brakes.